Two years ago, I was studying mechanical engineering uh, at this university, so just down the road, effectively sitting in this, the same spot that we're all sitting here today. And I, was, I guess I knew very, very little about everything I'm going to talk about today. In those two years, we've been working on this concept uh, called Halter. It is, uh, it's an ag tech company, and we're working on a collar that can move cows around a farm. Now, more importantly than this, we've uh, raised about, well, just under $10 million, and we've grown from two people to now a team of 25. Uh, we're based here in Auckland, and we're a US venture-backed company. So what I wanted to do is go through, effectively, those two years and everything that I have found, all the advice that I've been given from some amazing people around New Zealand and around Auckland. A good example of this is Peter Beck. He's the CEO and founder of Rocket Lab, a company you'll be very aware of. Um, and really, if I was sitting there and I wanted to do a startup two years ago, these are probably the main points that I've found the most important and the most helpful in my journey uh, through this thing. So the first one I wanted to touch on is you don't have to be an engineer. Now, this is very, very counterintuitive for, I guess, a lot of the advice that you are given and a lot of what you hear around, I guess, all the books and all the stuff that's out there online. And the reason I say this is because being an engineer and being the one person in the company that is working on solving the problems isn't a scalable solution to really anything. The important thing that you have to do is you've got to be the one that's motivating and encouraging a team of people to solve these. You've got to be hiring great people. You've got to be encouraging them and giving them focus and a vision. I'm a mechanical engineer, and we're an entire company of engineers. Um, I'm the, the only person out of the 25 that doesn't actually do any engineering. My entire day is just spent planning and en encouraging these people to think differently and think outside the box. And I think this is particularly important. But if you're not an engineer or you don't have to be an engineer, the one thing you do have to, have to be or you do have to do is you have to love what you're doing. Literally everything about a startup and that whole process is a passion. It becomes a lifestyle. One of the most important things I've found with uh, loving what you do is have a co-founder. Have somebody that you can go through the highs and the lows with, someone that you can turn to when you're having the worst day in the world and someone you can also turn to when you're having like, the best day in the world and you need to tell someone about it. Having someone that you can literally have next to you the whole way through is probably the single most important thing you can ever do when you're trying to do something as big or as hard as starting a company and, and completely changing an industry. Everybody shit, just try. This is effectively saying that every single person out there, <laughs> uh, every single, I guess, preconceived notion or idea is often just how it's always been done. Often people do stuff because it's what the person before them did or it's how they were told to do it. It's not always the best way to do something, and it's often not been looked at from a clean sheet of paper and thought, well, really, what, what are we trying to achieve here? So this like, is a very, very important thing, because if you're trying to do a startup or start a company, ignoring the status quo or doing things differently is really what you believe in. Um, and often not knowing is the best thing that can ever happen. Not having any preconceived idea of how to do it. And you see this, I guess, a really good example is Elon Musk. Like, he did not know how to build a rocket before he started SpaceX, or knew nothing about electric cars before he started Tesla. So those are very good examples that when you head into a problem, you're not clouded, or your judgment isn't clouded by a preconceived idea or how other people have done it, and traditional problems that you would face. Um, <laughs> so another, I guess, point to add to this, as a good friend of mine who works for uh, Elon Musk at the Boring Company was sitting there in an interview one day, and the person across the table said to them, I'm the worst person you could hire for this role. I know nothing about tunnels. And she got the job like right there on the spot. She'd been one of the most critical hires in that company since the beginning. And this is because she knows nothing about tunnels. She looks at the law, looks at the rules, and says, you know, we can do that. And for the last 150 years, everyone said, no, you can't do that. It's not allowed. So this is just this idea that being different and being diverse is very, very important in business, and it's, the, I guess, the complete opposite to a sports team, for instance, where you're trying to, everyone's trying to be the same and trying to be uh, a top performer in, in different levels. So this is, I guess, a very, very important thing for a startup, especially in the early stages. You probably need to raise money. So I know one thing's for sure, when I was sitting there as a mechanical engineer, I didn't have a dollar to my name. I definitely didn't have any money to grow a company with. And the most important reason you need to raise money is because you need to grow and you need to move fast. When it comes to raising money, it is something that can be done right here in New Zealand. It's something I guess not a lot of people know much about, and you don't need to have anything in place to raise money. You can literally walk down the road and raise anywhere between $300,000 and $1 million on the back of a napkin. You don't have to have the answers. You don't have to know how to do everything. And if an investor asks you, 
but what about this? You can genuinely say, you know, well, that's what all the money's for. This is how we're going to raise that, raise that round, or this is how we're going to, we think we're going to solve this. And what really matters is it's you, it's your team, and it's how you, how the investor believes you will go about solving that. Because they're not investing in, really in your idea. They're investing in the fact that they think when you're faced with a, with a problem or you're completely blindsided by something you never thought could happen, you're going to be in the best spot to solve that. So this is probably the most important thing when it comes to building a company is you need money. It enables you to grow. It enables you to hire people, have an office. And as if you can achieve this step in the process, you're well on your way uh, to solving a big problem or whatever your vision is when you step out there. When it comes to raising money, this is the, probably the biggest mistake you can ever do. If you go onto Google and Google how to raise money or start up pitch tech template and you pull a template and you put your stuff onto it, you're breaking all the fundamental rules of a startup. The reason you exist is because you're trying to challenge the status quo. You're going against how things were previously done. Finding a template and putting your stuff on that is the exact opposite. That is the status quo. If you turn up to a pitch meeting and you are similar in any way to the previous eight people or 10 people of that day, that's a guaranteed way to never raise money. This is how you raise money. Your investor or a potential employee or really anybody out there that you're talking to is a human. They want to know where you're from, your story, why you're doing it, and why you're passionate. Telling a story and taking someone on a journey is the single most important thing. And trying to do that with a template is very, very hard. Just to, uh, I guess, quickly touch on an example here. When we raised our last round of capital, um, we were literally sitting in a boardroom in San Francisco with a laptop. And we passed the laptop across the table and asked the investor uh, to control the cow that was halfway around the world in Morrinsville. So you're literally sitting there playing remote control cow in Morrinsville. It's four o'clock in the morning, the farm's floodlit, these cameras all around, and it's the most insane experience. And when that VC or that investor goes home at night, their husband or wife says to them, what do you do today? And you say, I drove a cow halfway around the world in <laughs> New Zealand. So having this thing where you're sparking the interest and you're telling a story and you're taking someone on a journey, is important for almost every single step. And if you're not an engineer and you need to be passionate about something, being able to tell a story to every single person you come across, whether it is future staff, whether it's your first hire or your 10th hire or your 30th, like whatever that is, the most important thing is that you can tell the story and you can share your vision with these people and you can motivate them. Passion is your resource is one line that sums up every single thing you will come across in a startup. And this is because passion and motivation is what keeps you going. This is effectively what drives you through those tough times and through the hard times. The only reason that you ever fail is because you run out of passion and you run out of motivation. And you get to the point where you've had 10 no's from an investor and then you just don't get out of bed the next morning because, you know what, this is pretty hard. If you try, if you hold passion and hold motivation, you will learn to write code if you need to. You will raise money. You will keep and keep going until you get to the point that you have money in the bank. You'll hire people. You will solve, you will solve really any problem you come across. And you'll sure as hell be able to change an industry and have a massive impact on the world. Thank you.